everyone and welcome. Let's stand and we'll sing together, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, and it's number 39. And let's sing verse 1, 2, 6, and 7.
name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. We gather on this Advent night, mindful that salvation is indeed close at hand. For the times that we have sinned, for the times we have failed, we call this to mind as we prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. A reading from the second book of Samuel. When King David settled in his palace, and the Lord had given him rest from his enemies on every side, he said to Nathan the prophet, Here I am, living in a house of cedar, while the ark of God dwells in a tent. Nathan answered the king, Go, do whatever you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that night, the Lord spoke to Nathan and said, Go, tell my servant David, thus says the Lord, Should you build me a house to dwell in? It was I who took you from the pasture and from the care of the flock to be commander of my people Israel. I have been with you wherever you went, and I have destroyed all your enemies before you. And I will make you famous like the great ones of the earth. I will fix a place for my people Israel. I will plant them so that they may dwell in their place without further disturbance. Neither shall the wicked continue to afflict them as they did of old since the time I first appointed judges over my people Israel. I will give you rest from all your enemies. The Lord also reveals to you that he will establish a house for you. And when your time comes and you rest with your ancestors, I will raise up your heir after you, sprung from your loins, and I will make his kingdom firm. I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. Your house and your kingdom shall endure forever before me. Your throne shall stand firm forever. The word of the Lord.
from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, to him who can strengthen you according to my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery kept secret for long ages, but now manifested through the prophetic writings, and according to the command of the eternal God, made known to all nations to bring about the obedience of faith to the only wise God through Jesus Christ be glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. said, 
and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be called great, and will be called Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of David his father. And he will rule over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. But Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I have no relations with a man? And the angel said to her in reply, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. Behold, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month for her who was called barren. For nothing will be impossible for God. Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The gospel of the Lord. So just remember, tomorrow we're back at the 8.30 and the 10.30, which really is the 11, but tomorrow it's 10.30. I'm confused and don't know what I'm doing. It's all your fault, folks. <laughs> you are here from 8.30 and 11. <laughs> Have you ever had someone say something to you and, and what they shared was so absolutely over the top that you weren't certain if you had heard them correctly, so you asked, would you please repeat what you just said? And sure enough, they repeated the exact same thing, which caused you to pause and try to take it all in. Mary didn't necessarily ask the angel to repeat what had just been shared with her, but she sure did pose at least one clarifying question. As the news presented to her was, was beyond what was humanly possible, not just for Mary, but for anyone else, at least at the time. Now, as for us, despite the fact that we may not have asked, this is the third time, this gospel passage from Luke that we've just heard, in this season of Advent, will have been proclaimed. First time was on the Feast of the Immaculate Conception of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Second was this past Wednesday, and on today, the third time. But remember, this particular gospel has been repeated millions of times over the centuries. And we believe that each and every time the scriptures are proclaimed, it's God who is speaking, once again. And always something new, always something that you and I and others need to hear and take to heart. It is, after all, an incredible story. One that clearly states that the angel Gabriel was sent from God for a purpose, with a message. Hail, Lord Grace, the Lord is with you. A story that tells that Mary was greatly troubled at what was said and pondered just what sort of greeting this might be. And does not seem to state that even after Gabriel says to Mary, do not be afraid, for you have found favor with God, that her fear was necessarily relieved. Especially since Gabriel adds to the story the news of what's about to happen. And it is incredible news. It's amazing news. Still, Mary, unlike perhaps you or me, Mary says nothing, though, about this Holy Spirit that's mentioned almost seeming to miss this spectacular and mysterious happening. 
when I can hear myself say, hey, wait a minute, back up. Explain this to me again, and just who is this Holy Spirit? But not Mary. Rather, she poses the question of just how can this be since I have no relations with the man? And then it happens. The only answer she needs is given. Nothing will be impossible for God. I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. What was, is, and always will be humanly impossible is never that way for God. But, friends, lest we miss the importance of this yes that Mary gives. She's not saying what you and I might think. She's not saying, oh, fine, have at it. If that's what God wants, count me in and I'll do whatever God wants. Now you see, Mary's yes is, let it be done to me according to your word. In other words, in other words, I will let God do this to me, in me, and through me. We speak or think or pray all the time for faith. And this is for you, for me, for countless others who've come before us and who will come after us. This is a tremendously important description of faith. Since faith isn't us doing things for God, rather, it's God doing and acting for us, in us, and through us. And if that's faith, not only allowing God to do what it is God seeks to do for us, in us, and through us, Think of how critically important your yes, our yes, is at those times. Times when, when perhaps we have a sense that we need to step forward and act on something in a relationship, a particular task or effort. God is asking for our yes so that God can act. Times when we are desirous of mending or reconciling a fractured relationship, God is asking for our yes. Times when, when perhaps we're even facing the pain of loss, grief, tragedy, even sickness. When we're unable to make sense out of what may be happening, God is asking for our yes. Our, I, I trust you, Lord, to lead me through this. I trust you, Lord, to show me the way. I trust you, Lord, to make sense out of what I cannot. Remember this. The message of the angel may not come exactly as, as we hear it came for Mary. But it will come. It does come. It comes in our thoughts. It comes through others in many different ways. And yes, God is asking for, not ever about our skill, our talent, or our ability, or even our lack thereof, nor even our desire to be fully equipped and prepared. But rather, it's always about God's grace, God's strength, God's power at work. That's what God's asking us to say yes to. God, who makes the possible out of the impossible, and God who seeks our yes, our cooperation, our trust. Friends, may it be done to each and every one of us according to God's word. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, Thank you.
incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death on his grave and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and Catholic Church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The day of our salvation is at hand. Trusting that God is with us, we join our voice in prayer. God of our salvation, that your church may faithfully call all to embrace your will with courage, as did your daughter Mary, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. God of every nation, that humankind may tire of hatred and war, seeking the path of friendship, dialogue, justice, and peace, especially in the Ukraine, Israel, and Palestine, portion of Africa, and the Americas, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. God of compassion, that those who live in fear or are anxious, especially those who suffer loneliness, may trust in your care manifested in the love of others, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. God of justice, that those who serve in the military and all who seek justice may be kept safe from all harm, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. God of new life, that those families awaiting the birth of a child may see your hand at work in the wonder of childbirth, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. God of all truth, that inquirers, catechumens, and candidates in your church, as well as our confirmation and first communion candidates, may continue to look forward with joyful anticipation to sharing more fully in the sacramental life of your church, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. God of all healing, that the sick and the suffering, especially Kelly Castle, John Charterina, Agnes Clark, Mary Dunkey, Danny Firth, Floss Firth, Daisha Firthney, Robert Giant, Julianne Jenkins, Dan Lane, Nancy Litton, Tom Morkowski, Beth Mariola, Lynn Mattingly, Kate Naglap, Carol Scaley, George Serva Jr., Paula Simmons, Kaylin Tafini, Alex Tedrick, Giovanni Testa, Mary Testa, Tina Testa. <coughs> as well as the hungry and the homeless, the lonely and the forgotten, the alienated and the abandoned, the victims and survivors of clergy sexual abuse in our church, and all who suffer in any way may experience the healing of your saving hand and the care and compassion of your people, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. God of our ancestors in faith, that our worship and our witness may draw others into your holy church, especially any who are missing at this time, and all who are supported through standing in the gap, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. God of the promise, that all who have died, and who have recently died, and Mary Lou Clark, for whom this Mass is being offered, may ascend your holy mountain and be 
behold your face for all eternity, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. God of care and compassion, that the intentions written in our prayer notes book, as well as those that lie within the silence of our hearts and minds, and those we have been asked to pray for, may always find favor with you, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Higher than the heavens, O Lord our God, and deeper than the netherworld is your steadfast mercy and unwearied love. Revealed in the child we call Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us, until the end of time. Make us as obedient as Mary in embracing the mystery of your will, and as unafraid as Joseph in welcoming the unfolding of your purpose. May the promises of the gospel embrace us all. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, who was, who is, and who is to come, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Our chant, sing together, people of the East, and it's number 43. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we can receive the wine of the offering, fruit of the vine, and worship in the hands. It will become our spiritual drink.
just as he filled with his power the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, filled with the fruit of the vine, he gave thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. church 
and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer to one another the sign of peace. sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my room, but only say the word in my soul shall be healed. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and his name will be called Emmanuel. Our communion chant, let's sing together Bread of Life, and it's number 73.
redemption. And we pray, Almighty God, that as the feast day of our salvation draws ever near, so we may press forward all the more eagerly to the worthy celebration of the mystery of your Son's nativity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. <laughs> I hope you recognize this community has certainly been blessed with so many who give of their time and their talent to support this parish's mission and ministry. Also, the gift of treasure. As we always do, remind the envelope users to please remember the collection boxes at the entrance of the church. Bulletins are very important this weekend. And also, take fives are near the entrances of the church. The sacred holy calendars will be available next weekend. So, hold on, they'll be here. Uh, the first Mass for Christmas Eve, just a reminder, is tomorrow evening at 5 p.m. The youth choir, who has been working very hard, and is doing an excellent job, will be offering music beginning at 4.40 p.m. So it would be respectful um, if you're coming in, you know, not at that time, that's okay, but to keep it to a quiet, no whisper, just nothing and listen. So it's important that way. Um, Christmas Eve Mass, then is at, again at 5. Then the other Christmas Eve Mass will be at 8 p.m. Christmas Day is at 10 a.m. There will not be a Mass on Tuesday, December 26th, and the Parish Center offices remain closed through Tuesday, December 26th. They will also be closed again on Friday, December 29th through Tuesday, January 2nd, uh, for the staff to observe the New Year's. Uh, a reminder, Eucharistic Exposition and Christmas Evening Prayer will take place this coming Wednesday at 7 p.m. live in church. It also will be live streamed. There will not be any confessions next Saturday, December 30th. The Mass schedule for next weekend, attention, it's in the bulletin, but just to repeat, Saturday, the Vigil for the Feast of the Holy Family is at 5 p.m. Sunday, the Feast of the Holy Family will be 8.30 and 11 a.m. Sunday evening will be the Vigil for the Solemnity of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, also New Year's Eve. That will be the 5 p.m. Mass. Monday, January 1st, is the actual solemnity, and that Mass will be at 10 a.m. This year, it is a holy day, but it's not a day of obligation, so I can hear voices going now, oh, I can see them. Uh, you know, we're going to be here, so y'all come out and support us. Um, uh, everything else that you need to know, of course, is in the bulletin, as well as on the parish website. The Lord be with you. Bow <laughs> down for the blessing. May the almighty and merciful God, by whose grace you have placed your faith in the first coming of his only begotten Son, and your for his coming again, sanctify you by the radiance of Christ's advent, and enrich you with his blessing. Amen. As you run the race of this present life, may he make you firm in faith, joyful in hope, and active in charity. Amen. So then, rejoicing now with devotion at the Redeemer's coming in the flesh, you may be endowed with the rich reward of eternal life when he comes again in majesty. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go announce the gospel of the Lord. Amen. Our recession will we'll see is called Come, O Come, Emmanuel. That is our song response. Come, O Come, Emmanuel. And then the refrain, Rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to you, O Israel.
Come on, come.